Welcome to the Wilmington Health Pediatrics Open House video. I'm Susanna Aylesworth and I've been a pediatrician with Wilmington Health since 2003. I hope that you find this video to be informative and help you make a decision in choosing health care for your child. We have four locations to choose from, six pediatricians and three nurse practitioners. At our Monkey Junction location, we have three pediatricians, Elizabeth Buskirk, Suzanne Smith, and myself, Susanna Aylesworth. At Mayfair, we have two pediatricians, Pamela Taylor and Daniel Ott. At North Chase, we have one pediatrician, Noah Archer, and two nurse practitioners, Erin Whitehead and Victoria Tucker. And in Leland, we have our nurse practitioner, Karen Bowden. We have in-office and virtual appointments available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. A few of our providers also offer appointments as early as 7 a.m. To schedule an appointment, you can either call our office, you can go online to the Wilmington Health website and use a live chat option, or if your child is enrolled in the patient portal, you can schedule an appointment online. Thank you for watching this video and we look forward to the privilege of providing health care for your child. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Suzanne Smith. I'm one of the pediatricians down at the Monkey Junction office. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today what to expect with your newborn in the hospital. Um, after delivery, he or she will be um, cared for by the pediatric hospitalist team there who we partner with. They're there 24 seven and can really attend to any concerns or questions that may arise. You can expect to stay anywhere between 24 to 72 hours in the hospital, depending on the health of your newborn um, and the type of delivery that you had. If you choose to breastfeed, please take, um, take advantage of the lactation support that they have available to you in the hospital. Breastfeeding is not always as easy as it's portrayed. So therefore we have a certified lactation consultant on staff um, at Wilmington Health Pediatrics to help assist you um, or give you further support after that hospital discharge if needed. You just need to let us know at that follow-up appointment um, that you need that additional support and we'll make sure that that appointment gets set up for you. We certainly want your breastfeeding goals um, to be successful um, and, and we'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. Um, if you have a baby boy and you'd like to have him circumcised, that service is also provided in the hospital for you by the hospitalist team. If for some reason it can't be performed or um, you'd like to have your pediatrician do it as an outpatient um, procedure, then we do have one provider in the office that can actually do that for you and he's going to talk to you about that a little bit later in this video. Within the first 24 hours, your baby will undergo um, some screenings and procedures to assure the health of your newborn. The first one is right after delivery, your baby will have an antibiotic ointment placed um, in his or her eyes, and that's to help prevent infection from forming. Within the first 24 hours, your baby will have um, two injections. The first injection being the first of the hepatitis B series. Um, this vaccine is strongly encouraged and, and we encourage you to get it in the hospital. We strongly believe in vaccines and we'll talk about our vaccine policy later in this video as well. The second injection is the vitamin K shot. Uh, babies are born with very low levels of vitamin K um, and this is going to help with, with your baby's blood clot blood clotting and help assure that um, there's no risk of internal bleeding um, for those first few months of life. Um, within the first 24 hours, uh, the baby's going to go undergo some screenings as well too. Um, your baby will have a hearing screen, a congenital heart defect screen, a jaundice screen, and what we call um, the newborn screen, which is actually blood that is taken um, and sent off to the state lab. Um, this checks for medical conditions such as cystic fibrosis, um, sickle cell disease, inborn errors and metabolism, that's really just to name a few. Those results usually come back by the two week, by the two week appointment time, so we can share those with you. If there's anything abnormal on that newborn screen, the state lab is really great about getting in touch with us um, and letting us know so we can either have that redrawn or we can address those issues um, as needed. 
If you decide to choose us as your pediatrician and we participate and are accepting um, new patients with your insurance, there is no need to call or sign up for Wilmington Health Pediatrics um, beforehand. Basically at the intake um, at the hospital with labor and delivery triage nurse, they'll ask you who, who your choice of pediatrician is gonna be and all you have to say is gonna be Wilmington Health Pediatrics. Um, and as soon as once the hospital team um, feels that it's uh, safe to send you and your baby home, uh, they'll let you know when you need to follow up with your infant. Um, and a lot of times that appointment is already made before you actually even leave the hospital. So we can't wait to meet your newborn um, and we hope you have a very safe and healthy delivery. And we'll be talking to you soon, hopefully. Dr. Liz Buskirk. I'm one of the pediatricians at Wilmington Health. I work at the Monkey Junction office and I'm going to talk to you for a minute or two about your baby's first appointment with us after discharge from the hospital. As you, as you have heard, um, the hospitalist team will take care of your baby while he or she is first born um, and admitted to the hospital. When it's time for discharge, they will let you know when you need to follow up and that's usually one to two days after discharge. Um, we think it's really important that babies are seen very soon after discharge to check for any early onset problems um, and for that reason we are happy to see babies on the weekend for the newborn follow-up um, or during you know the normal the weekday hours. If the follow-up appointment is during the week that can be at the office of your choice um, and usually with the provider of your choice if you have chosen one. If it's on the weekend, it will be with the on-call provider um, and it'll be at one of our offices that's seeing babies after hours. Um, at the first visit, there are um, a couple main things that we like to check. Um, one of the most important is feeding. Um, whether you choose to breastfeed or to bottle feed, there are oftentimes questions with that. If there are any nursing problems, then we can help troubleshoot um, and certainly get an appointment set up with our lactation consultant. Um, if there are formula questions, we can also help answer those. All babies lose a little bit of weight um, the first few days of life, and we just like to make sure that that weight loss is in the normal limits. We also do um, a visible assessment for jaundice, which is a yellow coloring of the skin that's very common in newborns. Um, and if there are problems with that, then we can certainly um, address that further. We do a full physical exam of the baby um, and make sure there aren't any um, new findings or anything like that and also review family history um, and prenatal history and make sure that there aren't any issues that need to be addressed um, in the first few weeks of life. Um, additionally, an important part of that visit is answering your questions. The hospital time is hectic and it goes by fast and of course you're sleep deprived um, and so you probably don't even know what questions to ask while you're in the hospital and hopefully you have had a little bit of time to adjust by the time you see us and we can help address whatever questions you have. It is helpful to bring a list to that appointment um, so that you don't forget anything. Um, if all is well at that visit, then we will get your baby set up for a two-week checkup. Um, and that can be at the office of your choosing with the provider of your choosing. If you like to pick one and stick with that provider, then that is just fine. If you like to um, change around and meet all of us, then that is perfectly fine as well. Um, if there are any issues that need to be seen sooner, we can set up a follow-up point, appointment sooner. Um, and we're certainly happy to answer phone calls, portal questions if you're enrolled in the portal, um, or acute visits as necessary. We're excited to meet your baby, and thanks for checking us out. Take care. Bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Ott. I've been with Wilmington Health Pediatrics since I finished residency in 2006 and I work in our Mayfair office. Congratulations on your new baby. And if you're having a baby boy, you might be considering a circumcision. This is an elective procedure that is neither recommended or not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. But the studies on circumcisions confirm that the benefits of this procedure outweigh the risks. Therefore, it's a personal and parental decision that if you're interested, we're happy to do for you. The circumcision can be done while you're still in the hospital. But if you're discharged early, or you'd like for your pediatrician to do the procedure, then we can arrange for the circumcision to be done for you in our outpatient setting with local anesthesia here in the office after you're discharged. The procedure can be done up to two weeks or 10 pounds, whichever comes later. Please let us know if we can answer more detailed questions about the risks, benefits, techniques, 
and details of this procedure. Thanks for watching and congratulations. Hello everybody, my name is Pamela Taylor and I am a pediatrician here at the Mayfair location at Wilmington Health Pediatrics. So you've been home for a couple of days and now you want to know what's next for your baby. In general, it's the rule of twos. So we're going to see you two days after you've been home and then two weeks and then two months. And then we see you every two months for the next several visits. Each one of those visits, you'll have different questions and we'll be assessing different stages of development and growth, all of which are very important, especially in the first year of your baby's life. At those visits, I encourage parents to bring a list of questions so you don't forget and you remember to ask the doctor all those things that bug you in the middle of the night. And we'll be assessing your baby for health and growth and making sure that he or she is developing properly along the way. Along with those visits at the two, four and six month visits, we'll have our routine shots. Shots start at two months of age and we'll go through each one of those at those individual visits. After the six month mark, it spaces out a little bit. And um, we see you again at nine months and 12 months where we resume more shots and then 15, 18 months and finally that two year mark where things really space out every six months. Once your child turns three, it's an annual visit. We have more routine vaccinations around age four. And then we start talking about school, which seems like a million miles away for, from your baby's birth, of course. But all along that way, we're helping you to assess your child's development and make sure that they're growing properly and that they're staying healthy. And of course, helping you figure this whole thing out along the way. Hi, my name is Vicki Tucker, and I am one of the nurse practitioners at Wilmington Health Pediatrics, and I work in our North Chase office. One of the scariest things to new parents is wondering what to do when their child gets sick. Um, all you have to do is call our office phone, which is 910-763-2072, and if it's after hours, that will direct you to our call service who can get in touch with a pediatrician for you. Thank you again for considering us and congratulations. Hi there, I'm Erin Whitehead. I'm a nurse practitioner with Wilmington Health Pediatrics and I work at our North Chase office. Probably the most basic question our prospective parents have, but also one of the most important is how do I schedule an appointment for my child during regular business hours? You've got two options. The first is to dial our main switchboard number 910-763-2072 and choose the number three from the prompts given. Your second option is to sign up for our Wilmington Health portal, our patient portal. You'll find detailed instructions for how to do this on the wilmingtonhealth.com website. We encourage you to do this as this gives you the opportunity to communicate more directly with your provider, schedule appointments, check labs. Again, thank you so much for considering us to be your pediatric practice. We hope to see you soon. Take care. I'm Noah Archer. Thank you for considering partnering with Wilmington Health Pediatrics for the health care of your infant or child. I've been given the responsibility of discussing vaccinations and our vaccination policy with you. I'm the oldest pediatrician in the group and I've had some personal and professional experience with vaccine preventable illness that we rarely see now due to the success of vaccines. People who were born in the 1960s, as I was, generally received one dose of measles vaccination around age one. The hope was that that one vaccine would provide immunity for life. In 1983, I was in college and my college roommate began to be ill with fever, runny nose, cough. He felt terrible. After a few days of being sick, he woke me up one night and asked me to take him to the emergency room. He couldn't breathe, he had stiffness of the neck, and he was covered with a rash. He was ultimately diagnosed with measles and spent quite some time in the intensive care unit. Thankfully, he pulled through and is doing fine today. He's a farmer. Scientists studying the vaccine found that one dose of measles given around a year provided immunity for 15 to 20 years, but after that time, individuals became susceptible again to this severe disease. 
A second dose of measles was then recommended, and by 1989, a booster given at age 4 or 5 became the standard. Scientists have continued to follow measles titers amongst people vaccinated, and 30 years later find that people still have good protection against measles. Haemophilus influenza type B, or HIB, is a bacterium that once caused significant illness and death among children and infants. In medical school and early in my pediatric residency, I saw many children who had invasive Hib disease, Hib meningitis, Hib sepsis, Hib cellulitis of the orbit and face. An effective Hib vaccine was introduced and I venture to say that most of my younger colleagues has, have seen few or no cases of invasive Hib disease. My own son in 1995, when he was about 15 months old, developed rotavirus and within eight hours was severely dehydrated and required three days of IV fluids in order to fluid resuscitate him. Now there's an easy oral routine rotavirus vaccine that gives good protection for this disease as well. We know that your child's health means everything to you, and we know that it is your decision whether or not to vaccinate your child. But as pediatric providers, we also understand that full vaccination on schedule and on time is supported by the preponderance of scientific evidence. We feel so strongly about this that we adopted a vaccination policy in 2017 at Wilmington Health. This policy outlines the expectation for full vaccination amongst all of our patients. We will not continue to maintain a medical relationship with families that refuse to vaccinate their children. We want you to know this information up front as you go about making the decision of choosing a pediatrician for your child. Most parents who are told about this policy respond with, great, I would hope my pediatrician would fully vaccinate their patient. It makes me feel better about bringing my child into the office knowing that other patients there have been vaccinated. But if you're a family that will not plan on vaccinating your child, we are probably not the practice for you. We will discuss vaccines at every well check and probably every sick visit as well and we'll ask you to sign a vaccine refusal sheet each time that you do. And if we cannot ultimately agree about vaccinating your child, we will ask to part ways and will no longer be your child's pediatrician. The CDC website has a wealth of information about vaccines as well. Vaccine schedules, benefits of vaccinations, side effects of vaccinations, and vaccination information sheets that be, can be downloaded ahead of each well check. Our own vaccination policy can be seen by going to the pediatric page of WilmingtonHealth.com. We look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Bowden and I'm one of the nurse practitioners with Wilmington Health Pediatrics. We are pleased to provide pediatric primary care in multiple locations throughout the area. We have three offices in Wilmington, in the Monkey Junction area, at North Chase, and in Mayfair. Our fourth primary care location is in Leland. Our hours for most offices are from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. We also offer on-call services after hours in the evening and nighttime so that our providers may answer any of your questions and address any concerns that you may have. Wilmington Health is also very fortunate in that they offer specialty services that we may access as primary care providers. These include, but are not limited to, ENT, dermatology, and orthopedics. We look forward to serving your child's health care needs. Thank you.